What's happening everybody? Welcome to today's stream. I hope you're all doing good today. So today we're going to be playing with some fluorescent dyes. Uh, this is actually something I've wanted to, to just play around with for quite a while and I thought, why not do it today? Uh, plus, I got a brand new shipment of uh, fluorescent dyes in. Uh, so I thought we'd do that. We're going to do a, a pen blank brick. So using the five by six mold and then we're going to do a, and I got one in the oven already. For that so we'll do that first and I got a two inch block mold uh, that we'll do second so just kind of playing around and what I wanted to, to try out I think today is we're going to use a, a lot of these colors and then add in a little bit of white and just kind of see how that works it's just something that I don't know I've seen similar things from other people and I just kind of wanted to play with it so I thought let's let's do it on the stream today so I hope everybody's doing good let's stop and see there's lots of people here already Steve was first. How's it going, man? Uh, Jim and Mike McEwen and Kim's here. And Twyla's here. Gene. And Mr. Webfoot. How's it going, David? And let's see here. Lance is here. Just kind of scrolling down, seeing who's here. Chris made it. How's it going? And Josh is here. Duca. Herb Scrolling Station made it. Nice. Ann McDonnelly, how's it going? Brickhouse is here. And let's see here. Else. Might have missed somebody. Sorry about that if I missed you. But anyway, welcome to the stream, guys. So uh, last week we did some... I'm kind of in the mood for just like playing with different stuff. Uh, and I thought it'd be kind of fun to do that for, for everybody else. You know, a lot of times we try to do dunk and junk stuff. I don't have a whole lot of stuff that I want to uh, like dunk and test out. The other problem is I don't have a whole lot of time to test a lot of these things, um, but we can just kind of play around. So last time we did some interference colors uh, and they turned out pretty sweet. They're actually all gone uh, on the website. So I was going to say they're available, but uh, they're, they're all gone guys. Um, so make sure to, to sign up for my email newsletter because uh, I, I put that out on Wednesday mornings. So check these things out. And they're actually not, I didn't polish them up as good as they could be, um, but they really shimmer and, you know, like kind of do that kind of weird shimmery stuff. And you can see, you know, like they, they really pop out compared to, I, I guess I don't have a, a just one of, one of my opal blanks. I should have brought one of those in because they're a lot more muted if there's no dark colors around it. They really pop out at you, all, all those colors, um, when you add that black in there. So I guess on the bottom, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of just dull. There's a little bit of green to it. But then you get around to where the, the dark stuff is, and they really pop. So they're kind of like an abalone type thing. I wasn't really going for uh, e extreme abalone look, but, but you get that, you know. You get that kind of abalone stuff. So anyway, if you missed that one, go, go back and check it out from last week. Um, see how we did that not a whole lot to it necessarily and then we also kind of played around with a couple blocks and so we did a why is this thing always messed up i already set the exposure on this hold on a minute guys no oh, i think i know what the problem was all right so now it's a little bit brighter so let's let's bring it back in here Ooh, ooh. And we got our blocks. So we did a little bit of gold and green. And I tried something on these that, that Casey Martin does, and he just throws a little bit of boiled linseed oil on them. They're dull now because I did that days ago, but it actually does work pretty well if all you need to do is just kind of get a picture of it. Um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend using boiled linseed oil as a finish or anything, but it definitely does kind of soak up some of that oil into the, the wood and pops a little bit of the color. Um, so you can kind of see what's going on, not too bad. This one, these might actually be, it'd be kind of a cool handle, but you really got to get to the ends. I didn't put, long, I probably should have used a little bit longer piece of wood in there, um, but it'll be really good, um, two, two really good bottle stoppers, I think, or, you know, like maybe like a gear shift kind of thing, or like maybe a, sh a couple short handles, you know, if you're just making a little tap hammer type thing, um, but pretty cool. So that one's, that one's available on the website. And then we kind of played around with some some crazy uh, starlight glitters, both the micro and the macro, I think. No, actually, we just did the, the regular, the, the, the macro starlight, the big ones, I think. Let me look. What do we do on this one? Hold on a minute. Did I put it in there? Yeah, we just used the regular starlight glitter, 
and then added the that that diamond dust they call it i think it's the same thing as macro pearl just a ton of it and that's pretty wicked looking i think that's going to be a pretty cool like handle type thing or something like that so again that one's up on my website as well i'm going to get these things out of the way these need to go home so that i can ship them out all right so uh one other thing that i want to do i'm not going to switch the camera view yet I'm gonna show you what's happening. So on Friday, typically, well, Friday's the first Friday of the month. And so for, for patrons, um, what, I guess I'm gonna actually put it on this camera. For patrons, we were gonna do the first Friday, but I'm getting my second COVID shot tomorrow. And I gotta be honest, I'm a little worried that I might have, you know, like get kind of feel sick on Friday. So I didn't really wanna have to like cancel the first Friday uh, live hangout like last minute and be like, oh, I feel terrible. So I just decided we're gonna push it back to next week just to make sure that there's no side effects from the shot that are gonna cause a problem. And so what we're gonna do on that one, uh, if you guys remember, I wanted to put a wall, or not a wall, <laughs> a shelf right here. And I thought, why not make a hybrid, like a, like a river table type of shelf? Um, this is kind of, you know, I haven't actually done, a lot of people ask me questions about river tables and I've never made a river table. Um, I just, I, I don't need one personally. I don't plan on selling one. So it just hasn't really come up, you know, for me. Um, and it's a lot of resin and, and I haven't done that type of thing yet. So, um, I've been kind of, you know, messing around with smaller things that are a little bit more useful to me, I guess. And, um, the progression that I kind of see is, you know, obviously you can make blanks, pen blanks and, and, and maybe bigger bricks and stuff with wood and resin. I would say the next step up in size, uh, and again, this is to get some experience for somebody that hasn't done it yet. Um, you know, maybe step up to like a cutting board size thing. And I've made some of those. I think I got one right here. You know, it's, uh, you know, 12 or so, 12 by 13 or something like that, or, you know, eight by 12 something like that size and, and then that'll be like the next progression but you know if you fail or something goes wrong you haven't just wasted you know 20 gallons of resin and then so this is actually i haven't actually seen too many people do this you know make like a a three foot shelf you know maybe two or three inches thick and uh and then that way you know before you get to that table where you're talking gallons of resin kind of step up and do something a little bit bigger and just kind of see because sometimes the mold box may be different or you know things may kind of change as you get bigger so i thought let's do this on the the patron stream so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make kind of a rectangular mold box and i'm going to do it this way where you know we're kind of filling this triangle it's kind of hard to see it's upside down here but we're going to kind of fill the triangle in the middle with resin and i thought that'd be kind of fun so we'll be using some deep pour um, but that'll be next week not this friday but not like not tomorrow or not you know two days from now but a week and two days from now um, we'll do that on the patron stream and if you want to get access to the patron streams head over to patreon.com slash nvwoodworks so that'll be the demo and then the second half of those patron hangouts is just me hanging out with you guys in the chat answering questions or you know talking resin whatever it may be so it's pretty fun I, I really enjoy those things we do those once a month usually the first friday of the month again because of the covid shot i just don't want to have to end up if i feel horrible i, I don't really, really want to have to cancel it so it looks like we got a couple of uh super chats from dave and julie thank you i appreciate it I already, I already showed what? Oh, was, did, was somebody looking for the things we made last week? I can show them again. If, it must have been those. Do a kind of a quickie. So here's the abalone blanks or interference color blanks. They turned out pretty good. And again, I wasn't really going for like, I kind of have a, a certain way that I do that my actual abalone blanks. And I just kind of wanted, sometimes you you do something you know every time and, and it works and you're like okay i don't really even want to try something different i don't want to mess it up um, and so i kind of tried something a little bit different i poured a little bit earlier uh, temperature wise than i normally would with these and they turned out fabulous i think they look pretty awesome you really can't mess up the abalone blanks i don't think i, I would say the, the one thing with abalone blanks with this kind of thing what you could mess up is adding too much black um, and one of the problems is you can't just add the black to the top like the, as, as the last thing and then try and swirl it around. It just won't get down in. 
So you want to kind of pour a lot of the colors, maybe about half of them or so, uh, a, th a third of your mold box, add a little bit of that black. That way you're getting like two layers um, kind of in the middle. So a little, little tip that I don't know if I mentioned. And then we did the, the micro, or not micro, the, it was the regular starlight glitter. I think th this one doesn't look as amazing like right now, but I think it's going to be really, really killer. Um, and, you know, the, the boiled linseed oil, I wiped it all off, so it's kind of dull right now. But we got that one, and then we did this one with the green and gold and the burl chunks on the ends. So there we have it. All right, so let's... Uh, I'm going to see what you guys are all up to. So uh, a little update on the dust collector. Um, everything is pretty much in. It's working fabulously. Uh, I had a few leaks right off the bat, but what, what ended up happening was, and I, I ended up co contacting Oneida to see if there was something that they recommended. What it turned out to be is I didn't really have the, the pipe level, like fully leveled out. It's kind of hard with the, the quick clamp thing because you can't put a level across the pipes. There's a clamp in the way. So I, I kind of, you know, was eyeing it and it seemed like it was close enough, but the truth was I needed to kind of, you know, level out some of the pipes. So pretty much fixed all the leaks and it is, it's awesome. It's, it's working really well. The one thing about it, and I think I've said this every single time, it was a ridiculously expensive thing to install, mostly the duct work. Um, the, the dust gorilla itself, I mean, they're not cheap, but they're not like ridiculously expensive. It's one of the, it's like the best dust collector, you know, on the market. Like it can handle anything. And there's even slightly lower, you know, cheaper ones that they sell that would work perfectly fine. It would have worked perf perfectly fine for me. I wanted to, to, to get the top level just so I had, if for some reason I expanded my shop and, and changed things around, I wanted to have future expandability with the thing. So I went for the expensive one, but that duct work was ridiculous. It was way, it was, I think the ductwork cost $2,000 more <laughs> than the dust collector itself. That's crazy. And I was, it, it hurt. It was, I was like, ah, this might've been a, be, a, a mistake kind of, but now that it's in and everything's working good, I'm pretty happy with it. And it's just one of those, you pay, it hurts up front and then <laughs> that's it. And it works good. Hopefully that's, that's, that's the way that I like to buy tools. I'd rather buy something that's a little bit like, more than I need kind of, and it's going to be expensive and, and, you know, high quality. And then that initial shock hurts and then it doesn't hurt every day. The, uh, all, the alternative is you buy something cheap and junky and it didn't hurt to buy it, but then it hurts every single time you use it because it sucks. Like that's, that's way worse, I think, than, than paying for something expensive. So yeah, I went with the metal, uh, it's Nordfab Quick. I think they call it Quick Fit. Um, I think that Oneida, I bought it through Oneida and it was, I think they call it quick clamp. Um, and that stuff worked fabulous. The reason I went with that, and they told me when I, when I was talking to the lady on the phone, she was like, Nordfab quick clamp stuff is ridiculously expensive. Like she literally said that to me. She's like, you can just get the regular metal duct and it's going to be like half the price. And I was like, yeah, but the problem is I don't want to be on a ladder drilling holes in this stuff taping things and doing all this stuff. I just, I want to grab a clamp and stick it together. And so she's like, well, okay, you know, we can do that. No problem. And so I will say that I think that I've never put together their standard duct system, but I ended up having to kind of reconfigure a few things because we didn't actually plan things out as well as we should have uh, initially. And uh, I'll tell you what, having the clamp system like that, it saved the day. Like it made things really easy. Once I kind of, you kind of learn how it goes together, like how to hold it and do it. And at that point you can take it off, put it on and, and it's, you're, you can hold pipe and, and put it all together and it worked fabulous, but it's way expensive. So anyway, so let's see here. Is there any other questions? You didn't feel well after the second shot? Yeah. We felt a little bit kind of run down after the first one. It, we, I felt weird. Uh, it, I didn't really feel that bad. Kind of had some a weird chills, chills sort of thing sometimes. Didn't really feel good um, for like a couple days. I just was at, like out of it, but it wasn't like I was sick. I didn't have a fever or anything. So my sister got hit really hard with her second one. So I'm kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Um, but, you know, alternatively, I, you know, I ran PVC, so going back to the duct work, you don't need to spend a ton of money on duct work necessarily. I mean, PVC works really well, especially, 
you know, depending on what your setup is, you know, you don't, you don't need this. It's just something that I wanted. Uh, and one thing that I really wanted to do, I had a lot of goals with this that I just, I wanted to get rid of the two dust collectors that I had, go with something that was better with better filtration. There's like a lot of random things that I just, that's what I kind of wanted. So it was like, I, I've waited eight years to put this. I've wanted it for eight years, this exact system. So finally did it. <laughs> finally, finally pulled the trigger. All right. So I've talked quite enough already. Um, what was I, I was going to say something though, wasn't I? I don't think so. Anyway, let's get to some casting. What do you guys think about that? Uh, let's see here. So we're going to switch to the, this overhead view. So again, we're going to go for six pen blank. I call it my six pen blank mold. It's a uh, five by six. Um, all right. So we got yellow, red, pink, orange, and green. And I think we're just, we're going to go for all these colors on each one. So unfortunately the super chats today, we're just going to go for, I'm just, we're just putting a bunch of colors in. Well, how, okay. Actually, let me, let me take that back. So we got two people that, that super chatted. So Dave, actually, I'm going to ask you first. So you, you'll, you'll get the pen blank ones. We don't have to do all five colors. That's not actually what my intention was. So, um, out of these colors, which ones would you like to see in the pen blank batch? And I'm going to add a little bit of white in as well. All right. So my, my game plan for this, what, what I had planned for the pen blanks, is we're going to basically mix up. Let's just say that, that Dave wants, you know, green and red. Okay. Um, so we're going to mix up cups, you know, and, and fill them with, you know, green and red. And then I'm going to have another cup with white and we're just going to basically color swirl it, um, pour it all together. And we're going to go for fairly opaque. These, these things do not get totally opaque. Okay. Um, the, the fluorescence from, from Illumilite, they, they, they're not, transparent like all the rest of their dyes but they don't really get fully opaque so for pen blanks you have to be you know conscious of that um, you're going to want to paint the inside of the blank or bare minimum at least the tubes on pen blanks um, but we're just going to mix them all together now on the other one <clears throat> let me zoom out because I'm, I'm a little crazy here on the other one what i want to do i think is go a little bit lighter color um, and, and try to make it a little bit more like transparent and, and kind of have like different um, areas. So like try and get like the red, let's just say we're doing two colors again. So red and then green, and then we basically pour them together and then add just some, some white swirls in there. So it'll be kind of more see-through. That's, that's what I'm trying for on these. So just to let you know what the game plan is when you're picking colors. Green and pink, nice, all right, sweet. And then, uh, uh, Julie, you can think about, so we got green, pink, orange, yellow, and red are all the colors that they have. And I put a link to, if anybody's like, oh, where do you get these? Um, you can get them on Illumilite.com. And uh, there's a link down in the show notes uh, and to, to, to where you get them directly on their website. You can get them, I think you can probably get them at Turner's Warehouse as well, but I just put my affiliate link to Illumilite in the show notes. Um, and then don't forget... I mentioned it, um, you know, if you haven't bought anything from Illumilite using my code, my code is Zach 10. I don't know that I'd waste the 10% discount on dyes. If that's all you're buying, um, you know, it's better. It's, it's only a one-time thing the first time you use it. So I would probably recommend if you need to stock up on resin or silicone and dyes and other things, like put a big order together and save that 10% using that code. I think that's a better way to go. But if all you want to do is just buy some dyes, then you can save 10% with that code. So, orange and yellow. Sweet. That's a good one. I haven't, I haven't, I would not have picked that. I like that. Okay. So first one, we're doing pen blanks. Like I said, today is, let's get this thing going here. Uh, May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. We totally wanted Mexican food today, but, um, just we're really waiting for that second shot so that we, we we've decided we for like the past uh since like november especially um that's when we we really locked down because things were breaking out around here and it was crazy and uh <clears throat> so we haven't done anything gone out to restaurants like to eat inside even outside really um since november and so we're really looking forward to going out to eat but we're waiting for the second shot before we do any of that stuff and the two weeks after so We'll have to celebrate Cinco de Mayo in two weeks, basically. 
Okay, so May 5th, we're doing fluorescence. Woo! Um, so, a uh, little update. So, I think I mentioned that Casey Martin is coming out with um, mica powders as well. And so, his, and actually, I think his website is up now. Hold on a minute, I, I forgot. Let me go look. Oh, maybe not. Hmm. I guess it's not up yet. Hmm. I'll have to I'll have to ask him about that. It might it it should be up like within the next day or two. Um, but Wine Country Micas is going to be the the website, um, and he's he just sent me a, like his whole set today. So it, it's and it, I'll probably have it tomorrow. Um, so it's just coming over the mountain. So that's pretty exciting, and I'm I'm excited. You know, there's a lot of mica brands out there now, and you know many of them are kind of similar, but what ends up happening is usually people get kind of slightly different colors here and there. A lot of the same, but slightly different ones. But he's actually coming out with, he's going to have some glow powders. He's going to have some like macro flake things. Um, what is some of the other ones? Um, oh, and color shift, some color shift um, powders as well. So not only is he going to have colors, but he's going to have some, some slightly different offerings, which is really cool. So I can't wait to get those um, and be make sure to subscribe to his YouTube channel. If you want to see, he's going to be putting up videos, just kind of playing with different colors. And I'm probably going to play with that too. Kind of like what I'm doing here. Um, just trying some different things out. So it should be pretty fun. Pretty excited for him. All right. So number one, we're doing pen blanks. And let's see that, that mold, that five by six, I usually pour about 540 grams. And then we're going to split off. We're going to do, let's see, green and pink. Just want to, I'm just going to double check and make sure that I'm not crazy here. Roll up. And green and pink, yep. And then orange and yellow. Okay, so, and then we're going to add a little bit of white. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do white. Um, you can add white dye. That's the simplest, probably, way. Um, or let's see what's going on here. Dyes are all. Okay, I had my dyes out of order. Oh my god. So you can just go with you know a little bit of white dye, or you could go with like you know a, a white pearl, micro pearl maybe, or you know whatever. I think. I think I want to just stick with white dye uh, on these. And just kind of see what ends up happening. Um, maybe we could do like on, on the, the, the see-through one, maybe we'll add a little bit of like a pearl um, with it. But so let's just go with white dye. So we're, we're going to use a little less white dye. Um, we just want that to be kind of an accent color sort of thing. Let me get this out of the way because we're not using that right now. Pen blanks. <clears throat> It'll be kind of more of an accent. So let's do, um, let's do like a 40-40-20. Is that right? 80-20? Yep. Um, split, so 40%. So we're going to put 216, 216, and then whatever's left over. 108, yeah, of course, half of that, um, is going to be white. So we're going to split off. This is the total amount, so 40% of 540 is 216. So we're going to go fluorescent green, fluorescent pink, and we're going to go white dye. So this should be pretty, pretty interesting. I'm, I'm excited. I've never done anything like this. So that's why I'm, uh, I'm, it's always fun to kind of play around with different colors and stuff. Um, I'm actually, this isn't a, a stock pen. This is a digital pen. Um, everything that I write, it saves it. It has a little camera in there. It saves it onto this like a hard drive, and then I can put it on my phone and back everything up. That way I don't, like, if anything happens to my notebooks, I lose them. They burn up in a fire, flood, what you know, whatever. Um, I don't have to rely on keeping all of my, my recipes here. I have everything backed up. So I have it on, on my phone, and then it's backed up. That's backed up to uh, Google Docs or Google, whatever, Google Drive thing. All right, so we're going to go for kind of solid dark colors. Now, on these bottles, let's see, what do they say? Because it used to be, let's see, it says add up to 5% by weight of dye to resin. 
to achieve desired color. Highly concentrated. Less than, it says, less than one drop may be adequate. <laughs> I don't find that to be the truth, but um, we're gonna go for that full amount. So technically, let's see, 5% of 216. That's a lot. We're gonna go a little bit less than that. I don't think that's right. I usually do it, I usually factor that 5%. I think that they kind of messed up. I think that you, they're really talking two and a half percent. If you're gonna factor it against the total amount of resin that you're gonna be putting this in, I would recommend going like maximum two and a half percent on this. Typically the way Illumilite does it with their dyes, they're talking about like 5% factored against half of the resin. Is, is typically the way that they say that. So I'm gonna stick with that kind of thing. So let's see, so that'll be like five grams basically. Yeah, so let's, we're just gonna do five grams of dye. And I think that should be fine. The problem is you don't wanna to put too much of this stuff in because it can cause issues with, with uh, curing if, if you're not careful. And then we'll put, let's put about, let's see here, what did I do? Yeah, we'll put about two grams of white dye in there. All right. I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I, I'm just not 100% sure on this 5% number. Besides, I don't think that we need to dump 10 grams of this stuff in there in the first place. That's a lot. That's kind of wasteful, just for pen blanks. All right, so let's get some... Uh, just to let everybody know, anybody that's buying pen blanks that, you know, buys pen blanks from me and is, you know, like, buys like the team color ones, um, there's still, I still have not gotten my shipment of Illumilite white in um, because of that cold snap down south. Somehow it affected something um, and, it, and they still haven't restocked and, and fulfilled orders yet. So... Um, I'm doing good on many, most of my, my team, the, like the team colored ones and, and anything that's got like pearls in it or like materials like wood or something like that. Or so pearls, metallic colors or clear, that stuff's going to be either made with mostly usually made with Illumilite clear slow um, for most of the pen blanks. Um, sometimes I'm, it may be an epoxy, so you don't have to worry about that. But anything that's like the solid colors team, you know, like the team colors, color swirls, some of those I'm starting to run out of because I don't have any more Illumilite white. Um, so I'm hoping that that comes soon, but I just wanted to let everybody know. All right, so we're make, mixing up 540. I'm gonna mix up a little bit extra. So we're gonna go with 550 grams, 275 times two. Uh, I'm gonna switch to the work, work area view. No, I'm gonna switch to, no, not that one either. <laughs> this one. <laughs> that way you can see me. And, and it's not just seeing my arm. It's the one drawback to having my jugs right in front of me. So I'm going to put 275. We're using Illumilite Clear Slow. I'm going to put 275 of each of those in there. I'm mixing the whole thing up first. We'll mix it and then we'll dump it off into separate cups. There we go, Two, whoa, 275 on the dot. Nailed it. And then the B. I don't know why this hid this, David, sorry about that. YouTube's chat thing is kind of weird. Two seventy five. We're getting there. Two seventy two. Three. 
almost there. Just about. Perfect. There we go. Actually, I'm going to use my, my silicone spatula. I don't use this thing that much. These are really, I would probably say that silicone spatulas are probably one of the best ways to go because they scrape the, the sides and bottom so well. I kind of, a lot of, well, this is mainly with the Illumilite white because it's so quick. I've been doing it so fast, so, so many years, a certain way that I, I kind of am picky. And some of that stuff, the technique, like you, you really, it's almost like an art, <laughs> you know, like it's just, that stuff is really hard to work with. And so if you're used to a certain, you know, routine with things, I don't like switching things up. And this literally is, I'm talking about stir sticks, right? So, but for like, if I'm just mixing a big cup up, this is a great way to go. Going with these uh, silicone ones and they're reusable. So that's a good, good option for you guys. I'm, I'm just kind of, in some cases I'm kind of picky about things and I just, I usually use like the, the HDPE ones or, the, or even popsicle sticks, but kinda, if I could find a silicone spatula that was rigid enough, but thin, like all the other ones, that's what I like about the smaller ones is they're, I like popsicle sticks because wood is nice and rigid and I like these things. They're all right, but they are kind of bendy and I don't really love that. A lot of the silicone ones are just, they're like big and they're not like typical ones. So. Just, just throwing some, some thoughts out there about <laughs> random casting things that, that I face. It's, it's a struggle, guys. It's a struggle. The struggle is real. Mixing sticks. What are you guys' favorite mixing sticks? Do you guys have a favorite one? You get, like, I don't know. There are other things whether it be casting or, or something else where you're, you're just like, nope, this is the way that I do it. <laughs> I don't really care that it's cheaper or better or, you know, whatever to do it some other way. All right, so we got that mixed up. Let's see here. We need to get, I need some cups. Jeez, I'm out of cups. Breaking into the stash. <clears throat> All right, so zero the scale out. We need 216 grams. That'll do it. Got 216 there. Zero it out. Um, I just, yeah, the, the Square HDPE, I just literally bought a 332nd thick sheet and just cut them up. And then I, I did kind of sand them a little bit just so they're not like kind of, you know, like square sharp. Mainly just, you know, in, in your hand. So it's not kind of like cutting into you, kind of, or, you know, whatever, annoying you when you're mixing it. Um, but they work really well. I'm, I'm pretty happy with them. Zero this out, and it should just be the rest, but 108 is what I'd like to have in here. There is a company that sells these little silicone things that go over popsicle sticks, actually. And, uh, and it's kind of a cool idea, but they make them really, it ends up making the popsicle stick again, really thick. And I didn't like that, but I was looking on their website. They actually have some smaller ones, um, that I'm kind of interested in. I might try those out. Um, and another thing that I used, um, recently that actually I want to, this is a pretty good tip. So I also bought these little tiny guys. They're like really thin and actually these work a lot better for mixing something up slowly that you don't want a bunch of bubbles in. Um, using a smaller stick, I, th I think, and um, some of you guys that do some more of that kind of stuff, I don't really do a lot of that, but I found that not having like a, a wide stick that I'm stirring with seemed to cut down how many bubbles, and it kind of makes sense, right? Um, but it seemed to cut down how many bubbles I ended up getting in the cup. 
So just something to think about, not a bad way to, at least something to try. Now with these things, you definitely wanna shake them up because um, they have um, like pigments in them, which are kind of like larger chunks of color than like compared to like dyes. Uh, I know that these are like liquid dyes. That's kind of what we call these, but um, technically the color inside is pigment and they're just larger chunks of it. And that stuff can kind of settle to the bottom. So give it a good shake. Um, I think there's also, you know, some sort of, uh, I don't know what, what they, what, what it's mixed in with, but it's got something in it as well. So, um, that'll, that'll just kind of give you, you guys can't even see this. Can you skip this? Pretty, pretty kind of thick stuff. Scoot that over a little bit so you can sort of see down in the corner. We got one gram. And I'll tell you what, Illumilite's new, the, the bottle tops, oh, love them. The little twist tops. They're still kind of messy, you know, like it's not perfect, but I mean, compared to, compared to some things. And uh, Divine Pigments went, started using these as well. And I was like, it's about time. Oh wait, we're going five grams, sorry, five grams of this stuff. We got a little ways to go here. Three, four, we're doing it. And I need to get more of this stuff. Just bought some more. I actually found out that my pink <laughs> that I had had for I don't know how long, like dried up or something. It went bad basically. And so just be aware of that. Um, not a bad idea to actually crack the, the bottle open every once in a while and just kind of take a look at it. Oh, that actually is pretty pretty opaque. I think they might have kind of changed these things a little bit because they, they used to not be so, so opaque. I think I might need to quit screwing around here because the resin's already starting to warm up. I can feel it. Oh, I gotta shake it. Shake, shake, shake. Nice, that's awesome, Drew. Thanks for joining the fun today. I'm glad you're enjoying it. We like to have a little bit of fun. So we got three, four. Kind of sneaks up on you. So so be careful if you're you're going quick. It'll kind of like all of a sudden your scale may, might be like, oh, we're there. Pink and green. And then we need some white. Make sure to mix it in nice and nice and good. So yeah, I, it's gonna be pretty. Yeah, this one definitely looks a lot more transparent. Kind of hard to tell, but I think you're gonna really definitely want to go for, uh, you know, painting the at least the tubes, bare minimum the tubes. You can probably get away with just painting the tubes, maybe like black or white or something like that. Might want to even paint the inside of the blank itself. And same thing goes for the white dye. This stuff is a, another one that's got like the opaque, the big particles in it. Same with black as well. Um, you really want to make sure that you shake. And these are for, for Illumilite dyes. And for Divine Pigments, they're all pigments. Um, so you definitely want to shake all those things up. I think that's all for, for Illumilite's liquid dyes. I think you, you just need to watch out for their fluorescence, the black and the white. I can't think of anything else that's like a pigment-based type thing. All the rest of their dyes are totally transparent and use the smaller particles basically of, of color. So you're looking, you know, the final result's gonna be like, you know, if you added red, Illumilite's red dye to resin, um, your, your blank would look like, like stained glass kind of effect where it's totally transparent but has red tint. Same goes for all the other ones. Some of their colors are kind of darker, like blue is pretty dark. You add enough of that and it's gonna be pretty dark, but it will technically be transparent. It just darkens everything up. Brown is pretty dark. Purple's dark. All right, so let's see, I, I can already feel these things are probably just about ready to pour. I think we're gonna pour at around 100 degrees maybe. Oh, we're at 103 already. <laughs> That's okay. We're all right. Um, I can usually go, I mean, technically, I could, I could wait till probably like 110, 115 and not really be that worried about it. All right, so are you guys ready? Let's actually get this in the middle here. 
I'm gonna move my scale back to where I like it. Okay. I'm just gonna kind of, we'll, we'll do our, the, the kind of typical thing. Wow, that's, that is bright. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> I love these fluorescent colors. What do you guys think? I'll add a little bit of white in there. A little bit of kind of bleeding. One thing that you could do uh, in this case, like if you're getting a lot of bleeding, one thing that might help is you could just pour like the green and the pink at the same time on, on opposite sides of your mold. And then, um, and then kind of swirl everything together at the end. That, that's not a bad way to go. Getting pretty thick. Yeah, these are going to be wicked, I think. Wicked cool. Okay, we got that one done. There's all kinds of different ways to pour things, and you know, depending on how you pour your swirl colors, it'll kind of turn out a little bit different. Everyone's kind of got their own little thing. And then I like to give it just a little bit of a give it a little swirl there. That'll mix them up, make them look kind of cool. So, what do you think of that? What? That's gonna be wicked. Good color choice. I like that. I do think one of these days I probably will have to go for a, all five of them and see see what ends up happening there. But I do like that pink and green. That's a good one. All right. Get this stuff in the pressure pot here. Pressure, man, I totally forgot to pressurize the pot one day on this one batch of blanks. I was so mad at myself. Came back the next day and, and you know, it's all locked up, but <laughs> the thing, the, the, the clamps were, were not, or the, I mean, the, the, you know, the, the pipes, the, whatever, the ball valve was open and I was like, I didn't crack that yet. <laughs> so don't forget to pressurize. Don't forget the air part. You know, you get in a hurry sometimes and uh, ruined. The one problem with Alumalite Clear, you have to pressurize it. And so if you forget to pressurize the pot, those blanks, I mean, you could do something with them, but I'm, they were for, for sale. And uh, so they were pretty much, what am I doing? This right there. All right, so I think I heard Mel. Shake, shake, shake. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks for the, the super chat, Mel. I appreciate it. All right, so that turned out pretty awesome. That's exactly what I was kind of like hoping for. Or I don't know, you know, like I had this vision in my head. And, uh, and that's kind of what I was, was envisioning. And I haven't really done that before with these fluorescent colors. So awesome uh, color choices. Um, let's see, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna close up these, these jars. Make sure to close these things up. You don't really wanna, like I said, these ones especially, I, I think that you're pretty good shelf life wise on most of the Alumalite dyes. I think they're pretty good. Black and, and white, I don't know, they may kind of have a, a, a shorter shelf life, but I think most of their regular dyes, like, I mean, I don't know, I do go through dye pretty quick, but there's a lot of colors that I don't really, in, in custom ones that I've made, that might have sat there for six months to a year, and they're fine. So I think that you're good to go with most of them, but with these guys, they can kind of like dry up basically, or, or, or something, I don't know. One of them went bad, it was like rubber. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and so you want to kind of, you know, make sure that tops close down on there. Um, one thing that I'm going to contact Alumalite about uh, and ask them is, is if it may prolong the life to put it like in like a, a cooler temperature. Um, Cause like I have this fridge thing that I, I keep cactus juice in and I leave it at, it's set for, I have like a temperature controller thing. This thing is set for 55 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Um, so it's obviously, it's not like super cool. Um, the reason I did that is in the summer, you don't want your cactus juice to get warm. And I also, um, you know, if you're having trouble, if you're using a resin that has like a really short show, uh, uh, working time, like I use Alumilite White, I leave that stuff in there. Um, so that way when I pull it out, it's starting temperature. Like, so let's say in the summer, it's 85 degrees in the shop. I pull it out of the fridge thing and it's starting at 55. So that gives me a little extra time. Um, that's one little trick that you can use if you're having problems with um, working time with your resin. Um, cooling it down will prolong it, obviously, because you pull it out. But, I mean, if it's like 115 degrees, it's going to warm up pretty quick, right? So it'll give you a little bit of extra time. Uh, let's see here. Micah. Filter. Huh. I've never, I've never heard of that. That's cool. I believe the price will go back down on that, Julie. Um, that's what, that's what I, for, from my understanding of it, there was, there was an increase because of that issue with the cold snap thing and the, the whatever. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, there's kind of inflation going on right now with a lot of stuff, so. I don't know, uh, I guess, but that's what I was told by them that, that there's going to be a, a price increase on the urethanes. And, and again, I believe it was just the urethanes, which is going to be your Alumilite clear, clear, slow, Alumilite white. Um, as far as I understand, they didn't mention epoxy. I don't think that was affected by that. Different um, um, raw materials, I, I believe, I guess. I, I'm not an expert. I'm not sure. But that's, you know, from, from the conversations that I had with Carol, and uh, uh, a couple other people over there. That's what my understanding was, that it would go up and then it would get, come back down again once things were like the, the inventory was back, the stock or whatever. I don't know, but I'm hoping it goes back down, <laughs> you know, uh, myself too. I'm just hoping that they get Alumilite. I, realistically, I'll, I can handle price increase as long as they get Alumilite white back because those are, that's by far the most that I sell are those team color blanks. Um, let's see here. Yeah, most, a lot of, some people have asked me to kind of go over Alumilite White and, and I, and I, 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 and I always say I don't do that anymore. I've tried it in the past and, and it's maybe, maybe I shouldn't be saying this for other people, but I really truly believe that you're better off going with a clear resin because Alumilite White is with two minutes of working time. For most people, I, I just don't see the point. They're gonna be frustrated, pissed, they're gonna waste money. And for you to figure out how to use, use it and get results, because I think a lot of people are like, oh, I wanna get you know the same pen blanks, like the same results that you get on your team color blanks. And I totally get that. And I'm not like, oh, I don't want to help you because it's some big secret. My problem is it took me eight years to figure out how to pour them. It, it's kind of a technique based thing that you just have to pour and pour and pour. Um, and I started out with that resin. So, you know, I just, I had many years of practice. Then I actually switched to the clears. The thing is nowadays, you know, if you're going to pick a resin, you can pick any of the clear resins and you're going to get pretty much the same results as you see everybody on the planet doing because everybody's pretty much using those clear resins. So the problem is most people in the past have been like, oh, I want to try it. And so they try it. And then after like, you know, a month, they're like, I give up. This sucks. And I'm like, yeah, it's not <laughs> fun uh, to, to, to work with, basically. And the other thing is, you know, you can buy a clear resin and you can make... Um, you know, the reason I bought it was I liked the opacity. You, you can get opaque colors, but I mean, at this point, if you want to just get opaque blanks using a clear resin, just use the divine pigments. It's the same outcome. And that way you don't have to change everything and figure out this new resin that's super difficult to work with. I just, that's why I'm like, I don't, I don't even cover it because most people end up, I, they, 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 I get 50 billion questions over the course of a month. And then they say, I give up. And I just said, I, I can't. I'm not even going to cover it anymore because I don't think it's worth it for people. I think it's a bad choice. Um, there's better alternatives, personally, I think. Um, anyway, that's my thing about Alumilite White. I really, I do like it, but even I have problems with it sometimes, especially in the summer when it's 85, 90 degrees. I got to put it in a fridge just to get, um, you know, just to be able to actually pour it in time. 
kind of silly. I, you know, it's kind of tough. So anyway, let's see here. I'm just going to roll up here and see if I missed something else. Question. Alligator, sweet. That sounds cool, Martian. All right, so let's see here. Next one, oh, I should have put this in the oven. Dang it. Uh, the next one, we're gonna do a, a handle, you know, I just kind of call these handle blanks or like a block, two inch block. Um, so it's about six and a half. I don't know, I always forget how big this thing is. How big is this? Let me go get a tape measure, guys. Six and a quarter, six and a half. My tape measure is across the room because I was measuring out parts to make a mold for that shelf. Six and a half. Six and a half long, two by two. All right, and so what I want to do with this one, again, so we got our colors already picked. Uh, Julie picked, I want to say it was orange and yellow. I wrote that down. Orange and yellow dyes. So we'll put the red away. We'll do that another day. Um, I'm going to put that in the oven. I can use this as an example. So what I want to do with this one is we're going to go a little bit more on the transparent end. I'm not going to try and put two and a half percent um, of the dye in. We're just going to kind of add a little bit. And this is one of those things like for pen blanks, you can't look in the cup. So like, let's say that I, you know, and this goes for micas or, or whatever you're doing, you pour in, you know, 200 grams like I had in there and you're, and then you add some dye or some, some mica, you have no clue what the pen is actually going to look like because, you know, in the cup, there's a lot of particles of color. So this goes for micas or whatever. There's all these particles in here and it's like, you know, two inches thick or, you know, however deep it is. That's a lot more than by the time you're done turning a pen, you're talking like an eighth inch. Like that's how thick the actual material is because you drill out the center, turn it down to a really thin amount. And so by that time, there's just not that much particles in there. So the way to kind of test and get an idea at least is what I do for pen blanks to kind of see how opaque is the mica powder or the dye or whatever is I'll, I'll kind of just grab a little bit on a stir stick. And if you can still see the wood grain or, you know, the, the, the color of the stick, then obviously it's going to be transparent when you turn it into a pen. Now that's different though, when we're talking about, a, you know, a handle blank, if this thing's going to end up, you know, staying like an inch and a half thick, let's just say you were making, you know, bottle stoppers or, or a handle that was like inch and a half or so, you know, thick at the, the widest, maybe a little thinner than that, but you got some, some actual thickness to that blank and you're not drilling out the center. It's going to be a mass of resin. You're going to have more of those particles of dye or, you know, the pigment, whatever, mica powder. And so it's a lot easier to get an idea of what is the blank actually going to look like or the finished product on a handle or something like that by looking in the cup itself. Um, you can't do that for pen blanks. It's going to be a lot more opaque or darker or, or whatever um, in the cup. So pen blanks, don't look at the cup, look at the stick. For everything else that has some mass to it, then you can kind of use your mixing cup and, and, and your mass of resin in there to get an idea of what it's, what it's going to kind of look like in the end. All right, so we're gonna go for kind of transparent on this one a little bit, just add some of that color, but, uh, and then we wanna add, try and add some kind of sweepy uh, white, hate, you know, swirls or whatever in there. That's kind of what I, what I had in my mind. So let's see here, we got our, our book out. Let's, uh, let's get the overhead going here. <clears throat> just eyeball it. <laughs> yeah. For pen blanks, you can't eyeball it. For everything else, you can kind of get an idea. Let's see, what am I doing? This one, that one, the overhead view. So number two, I'm doing a two inch, I'll just call it two inch block. Oh, I forgot to, one thing I forgot to do is I, I also add what mold did I use? So I'm gonna call that my six blank. We're going back to the other ones, the, the pen blanks we just did. And then we use uh, low set clear. So for this one, we're using the two inch, uh, I call that my two inch mold and we're going to do slow set clear again. Now that thing, that two inch by six and a half, I want to say that that holds about 450 grams. I'll just go with that. And then we're going to do two colors plus just a very tiny bit of white. So we're going to go for, let's see here, 450. <clears throat> So 
So I think what we can do is like 210 grams. I don't know what percentage that is, but we're gonna go about 210 grams of each of our colors. And then, yeah, and then about 30 grams of the white. That's, that's, that's how I'll break that up. So total, so let me get a couple of cups here, two cups and one for our white. I'm actually gonna get a smaller cup for the white. These plastic ones are kind of expensive and really kind of too big. So actually here's these, it's plastic, but it should work. I think it's about a two or three ounce cup. Not, not, that should be perfect for 30 grams. Okay, so we'll get our, oh, and then I gotta add what we're doing here. So fluorescent, what do we do, orange and yellow? Yep. Fluorescent orange, fluorescent yellow. And you know, I was kind of talking about like percentages and doing all these things, how much, how many grams of, res, of dye and all that stuff. And yes, you can eye it. I mean, there's no, and in this case, I am just going to kind of eye it, you know, you do it until you like it. But if you're going for very specific results, then especially with dyes, then you're really going to want to figure out and know exactly how many grams you put in. If you're, especially if you're trying to do like, like color matching, you have to be absolutely perfect on that stuff. Otherwise you're not going to be able to repeat what you did. And that's the whole point of taking notes like this too. So in this case, we're going to add a little bit of white dye, but we're going to also add some mica. Um, one of the one of my favorites, and actually, I'm pretty sure that Casey is he's getting a micro pearl, so I can't wait to try that one out. Um, but I, I like micro pearl to add kind of like a real true like pearl look. So we're just going to add like a, a few drops, probably I don't know, two drops of white plus. I don't know, uh, an eighth teaspoon maybe. Actually, I'm, we're gonna just probably go with a small scoop. Just something that I, this, this is totally scientific. Small scoop of uh, micro pearl. And so the one, this one is a Pearl X brand, but, and I'm kind of guessing that whatever Casey has is probably, probably the same exact thing. I'm guessing most of these mica powders literally come from the same factory. So you can brand it however you want, but <laughs> you know. I think they're all kind of the same. <clears throat> all right, so we got our plan of attack here. Got our dyes. Let's get some resin going. So 450 divided by 2, 225. Might have gone over there. I don't know. I kind of lost track of how much I was putting in there. Oh, 215, 223, 4, 4.6, 225. There we go. Zero that out. My part B pump has some kind of a clog in it. <laughs> That's always fun. Oh, I went over two thirds. Okay. Whoops. I wasn't paying attention guys. So I need to add six grams. I'm six grams over on the part B. So I'm going to add six grams of part A and everything will be fine. Okay, we're okay. Everything's good. I'm gonna pull out that spatula again. Silicone one.
All right, so again, always want to scrape the bottom. And, and when I'm mixing, I, I'm not, I don't have the, the, the spatula like halfway in. It is down to the bottom. You know, and that, that way you're, you're definitely getting that bottom scraped well anyway. But it also, that also kind of reduces the amount of air bubbles. Um, but always kind of stop every once in a while and, you know, get the sides scraped real well. So you're not missing any part A's or part B's. Get them all mixed together. You can even scrape the, the spatula thing or the stick off a little bit. Okay, so we're good to go. And zero that out. So we need about 210. I went a little bit over, but... Right. And what? Super chat. 210. Ooh, we're getting there. Go four. There we go. Two ten. And I can. Well, one thing I need to do. So this, these ones are brand new. I need to open these guys first. There's like, there's always going to be a little lid thing in there. That's the messy part. Opening for the first time. Oh, come on, work with me here. Wow. That one does not want to open. Hmm. Wow. All right. <clears throat> Cut the thing. Okay, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to mix these. I'm going to shake these guys up. Wow. Drew and Richard, thank you guys. I appreciate it for the super chats. All right, so we're shaking these guys. I always want to shake these guys up for anybody that missed me mentioning that before. These got particles of pigment in them that can kind of settle to the bottom. So you want to shake them up. I'm going to zero this guy out. We're going to put in, actually, we don't need to measure that that way. We're, we're going for light, like kind of transparent. So we're going to go with a drop and we're just going to see all I want to do is get this tinted. Yeah, so that's pretty good right there, right? A little bit of tint, fluorescent tint. Maybe, maybe just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more, a little bit. I don't want to go too much. You're going for like that transparent color. That's why they say on that last line, perhaps even less than one drop. Might be enough, come on. Might be enough. Because it's true, it can get a little bit cloudy, but it's not gonna become a totally opaque, you know? I was trying to kind of mention that with pen blanks. You gotta discern that, there we go. That's a little bit more vibrant. I think we're still gonna be able to see in there. You know, see those swirls? I, I think we're good to go, I think I did a I think I, I think I did it good. All right, so 210 grams in here. Same thing, we're gonna go with a little bit of yellow this time. See where we're at, just to put a drop in there. Ooh. 
that is fluorescent. I might, I might go for a little bit more. This yellow seems a little bit more thin, more transparent than orange was. So we're at about the same amount as I did for the orange. I might, I might do one more, one more. Uh, hopefully I won't go over. I'll drop. There we go. You gotta wiggle it. Okay, I'm pretty happy. I'm satisfied with those colors. So now we need, basically the rest goes in here. Really wish that that I should have opened those jars before I started because I'm kind of running a little short on time here. That's okay. I'm going to shake up my white. You want to shake that one up too? We're going to put two drops. Let's see. I'm going to try just one drop first. I think that's probably going to be enough for what I want to do. Yeah, that, that's plenty. And I could just go with this. Um, this would work, okay. But I'm going to add a little bit of this micro pearl powder. Or just, just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of a sheen. All right, so I call that a small scoop. Highly scientific measurement. In this case, it's not that big of a deal. You can, you can kind of eye something like this. And it just adds a little bit of like kind of pearly action to that white, so it's not just kind of milky look. I don't know if you guys can kind of see that, but a little bit pearly in there now. All right, so I would imagine that we are probably pretty close to pouring time. Um, one thing to consider, we're at 100 on that one. Should be the same here, 102. Um, I'm going to wait a little bit longer. So one thing to consider, the white dye is heavier than like everything else. It's like super heavy compared to the resin and everything. So um, it tends to just drop sink to the bottom when you're pouring it in blank. So you got to really be careful. You want to, this is a case where you don't want to pour the white in like early, like, like lower. You want to kind of pour it in at the top. That way, if it does tend to kind of sink down, um, it'll, you know, hopefully you're using a resin or, or have waited till the end where it'll kind of lock it in. It may sink, but it's not going to all sink because um, that can be the problem that you run into. So one thing that we're going to do with this though, and we can do this right away. How I want to do this one is we're going to pour both colors at the same time and get kind of two, two different, whoa, I almost spilled that. Don't do that. We're going to get two different kind of looks here. So we're pouring at the same time. Look at that. How cool is that? A little trick that you can use. Probably better if you're going to do this and don't want it to move around a whole lot. Probably better to kind of wait. You know, same thing you would do for any kind of color swirl type deal. Wait till the end of the working time so it doesn't have much time to be moving around and doing stuff. Kind of changing, altering things. Depends on what you want, but I would wait. Okay, so we're, we're kind of up in the, the high 115 area. So now I'm gonna kind of pour this. Like that. Might have waited a little bit too much, too, too late, too long. <laughs> Trying to kind of push this white down in. I, I would have typically poured this a little bit earlier, so might be having some pro problems getting that like down, you know, really, really into the blank. Kind of looks like a mixed drink, like a an orange and yellow kind of drink. Mai Tai or something. I'm gonna add a little bit of this orange into the yellow. 
I think this is going to be a super awesome, beautiful blank. Fiery. All right. I've messed around with that enough. So there we have it. It's looking pretty cool. I, I don't know. I have never done anything like this before. I will tell you that right now. And I am super stoked about it. So I hope you guys try something like this out. I think I'm going to be playing with this kind of this same exact thing that I just did. Um, I think I definitely want to play with that on some more of these blocks with probably with the different colors. Um, and I really liked that kind of pulling, pulling a little bit of that orange into the yellow. That was, I didn't, that's not, I don't know. I don't exactly know what I was thinking when I went into this, but that's not what I was thinking. And I'm glad that I, I don't know, I'm glad it worked out that way. Now, a couple things to note, um, you may get slightly different results depending on how long you've waited uh, before pouring and doing all that stuff because I was really manipulating that if it would have been on the like if I would have been down in like the 90s 90 you know 95 degrees I have a feeling manipulating and messing around with that and the way that I poured the white probably would have turned out quite a bit different um, and and this is something that I, you know you want to write down in your notes so on the first one we probably waited till about 105 to pour on this one I mean it was I don't know. I'm going to put poured at like 105, uh, like 105, but then I was kind of messing around with white. I don't know. It was probably at least like 110 to 115 when I poured that. Um, it was kind of hard to, to be, you know, gauging and all that stuff. But, um, and, and I, luckily I have kind of video that I can go back and watch. Not a bad idea to set up, you know, if you got an iPhone or whatever, um, set up a camera. If you're doing something super experimental that you, you want to document how you did it, then <clears throat> videotape yourself, you know, try and set that camera up in a position where you can kind of see, talk to the camera, uh, about what you're doing. That way, if you want to go back, you know, and, and see exactly how did I pour this? When, when did I do this kind of thing? Um, that's really a good way to do it. Um, when you're experimenting so that you can tell I I'll, some days, if I'm doing something super experimental uh, that I definitely want um, to, to be able to go back and see, I need to clean off. Whoa, I hate that, that uh, <laughs> thing. Um, if I want to go back and see exactly what I, was, what I did with it, I will flip on my, my live streaming cameras, exactly how I'm doing this stuff. And that way I can just go back and it saves the file on my computer. Um, and you know, a lot of times I'll just delete it or something like that. But um, if I didn't like it or, you know, whatever, or if it's, oh, what am I doing? I'll throw the spatula in the trash. That was silly. I'm okay. Anyway, so you get the idea. Um, video's good. Keep good notes. Um, but simple things like, you know, what temperature was it when you poured it doesn't maybe seem like it's that important, but it really is. It's, it, it'll drastically change the way blanks end up turning out. And I think this is, you know, a lot of people kind of will watch me do something on video and then they're like oh i tried it but it didn't work and <clears throat> a lot of times it has to do with that temperature um, and one other thing to think about also is you know i may say oh you know I, I poured it at like 110 well when i'm usually the way that i measure the temperature is i'm going to stir up the cup first then hit it with the gun i don't just let it sit on the desk forever and then not touching it, just hit it with the gun because the top level is going to be a different um, temperature. It's going to be cooler than the center. That's why I stir it up. And so whatever way you do it, you need to do it the same. I would really recommend stirring it um, because that way, if, if you mixed up a giant bucket compared to like a really tiny one, I think being, being able to kind of mix it up and make it all kind of average, I think that's a better way to make the, you know, take that temperature personally. That may not be true, <laughs> really, but in my mind, that just kind of makes sense, I guess. Um, but, you know, other factors may, you know, what is the ambient temperature in your shop? That can kind of change things because if your resin started out at 80 degrees, it was sitting on the desk and it was 80 degrees in your shop. I find that the, the viscosity is very important when you're pouring these things. And so um, the higher the temperature is, like while the resin is just in the jug, the thinner it's going to be, right? So if it's 40 degrees, the, the, the resin is going to be thick, like really thick. If it's 80 degrees, it's going to be pretty thin. 
So a lot of these things kind of, you know, a lot of things all kind of go into these, these little calculations and how you get things. So um, don't feel bad if you kind of copied like, oh, I poured it 85 and did this and that, and it didn't turn out the same. It may just be other factors, you know, that, that you didn't really think about. So I just wanted to kind of share those little notes with you guys, little random tips and thoughts there. Uh, it looks like Shan Shanna, I almost, I almost said Shannon, I'm sorry about that, Shanna. Thank you for the super chat. I actually, the thing won't let me see. Oh, there it is. You love the colors. Thank you. I appreciate it. I couldn't see the YouTube's interface thing is weird, uh, but I scrolled up and saw that. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you to everybody that super chatted. You guys have been very generous today. I really, it's awesome. You guys, thank you for all the support. So let me stop real quick. We got a little bit more time. Let me see if there's any questions before I go. Um, hold on a minute. Yeah, I like to have pretty good color separation too, usually. So kind of the, it's hard to say the longer you wait, the better the separation. In some cases, that's usually true. Um, you could wait too long where it's like super gummy and thick. Um, and, and if you wait too long, you may um, end up getting air bubbles in that the pressure pot can't fix. Um, but for Illumilite clear slow, I mean, I've gone up to like 130, especially in the, in the summer, and it's been okay. Um, maybe not so much in the, the, the winter time when it's cooler. For some reason, it seems like I, I'm, I'm able to do, uh, you know, go up to like 130, and definitely in the summer. I just, I know that I've tried that. So you're usually okay, but much higher than that. And I think that you're gonna probably be running into some serious problems. Um, I typically don't recommend going much below 95. I think it's just gonna bleed a lot more. It's gonna be very thin. And um, also that, that temperature number, um, the other factor with this is it's not just like the viscosity or the, you know, the temperature has something to do with it. One of the things that you're waiting for is, you know, the hotter it gets, the closer it's going to be to that point where it goes from liquid to solid. And it's just, it's in place, like it's hardened. Um, so, you know, the longer you wait, the more things are just going to lock in, um, you know, kind of quicker, I guess. Um, so just, just a couple things to think about when you're doing these color swirl things. Uh, let's see. Tequila Sunrise. That's what it is. That's what I was thinking of. Nice. Good. Sounds like onomatopoeia. I like that. Let's see here. Um, are you asking about? Yeah, I like the temperature thing. I, I, was, I used to use a timer. You can see I have a, a little timer thing. I used to do that for, forever. And the, the reality is, though, you have to be extremely... Um, like every time that you, you, you know, once, once you add the part B to your cup, you have to do things exactly the same with like the same tempo, right? Like you have to mix for about the same amount of time um, to, to make that an accurate thing. Um, because if you sit there and mix it for a minute longer than you did the last time, you know, or let's say, I'm trying to think here, like depending on when you actually hit the timer button, and, and how long it takes you to mix everything, it's gonna severely you know, change how things kind of work out. Um, the temperature thing, it really doesn't matter. Um, the one thing I will say though, is like I was saying, the, the, the hotter, or the warmer, or let's just say different ambient temperatures will kind of affect things. It'll, it'll pour a little bit differently. Um, in the winter, like I said, if it's, you know, let's see, what does it drop down to in here? We, we keep our heater on so like 68 degrees is pretty typical like for for much of the year probably about half the year and so at that point i can usually get away with pouring at 95 and like the viscosity of the resin and the way things all kind of work it, you know it, it works the way that i'm used to and then when we get into the summer when it's like 85 in here 80 85 in the, in the shop that means you know the the resin now it is affected on the, the Illumilite white that I keep in the fridge, but I'm kind of talking about Illumilite clear slow. I just leave that out all the time. And so, you know, when it's 80 degrees in the shop, in the jug, the resin's warmer, right? And so even right now it's 73. That's totally different, actually. You might kind of laugh at this, but 73 degrees is totally different than 68 degrees uh, for me. It's just, it, it, I end up waiting a little bit longer um, before I pour because the resin started thinner. 
because it was warmer sitting out um, because of the ambient temperature. And so I end up like, you know, right now, 75 degrees, let's say, let's just call it that. I'll probably wait till 105 when I'm pouring pen blank color swirls. Whereas in the winter when it's 68, I'll, I'll probably, I can easily get away with pouring at 95 and it just, it feels, everything feels the same. And so I kind of adjust slightly with the temperature, the ambient temperature in my shop. Um, but the gun is by far the best. And I have to thank, um, um, Brian Blum for, for mention, for like getting me into that. I was kind of like, Oh, okay. You know, like he's using this temperature gun and I'm like, does that work really? And then once I started doing it, you know, I, there's no way I'd go back. It's, it's by far the best way. And frankly, I think any temperature gun, you can get them on Amazon. You can get them at Harbor Freight. I got mine at Harbor Freight. It's a scent, Sen tech. Um, I don't know if they still have those or not, but I think you're good no matter what. I'm pretty sure, I want to say that Turner's Warehouse might even sell some, possibly. Let's see here. Mixed up five interference colors. Nice. That's awesome, Eric. I'm glad that you did that. I, that's why I like doing these things is hopefully, um, you know, Hopefully it'll give you guys, if you're like, oh, I want to make some of those, you, you do, you know, and, and, and you, you get in the shop and make something. But what I find awesome about doing something where I'm like, oh, here's this thing that I did. And, and, you know, obviously I share it either in a video or on a stream. The best part is when somebody's like, oh, that would look so cool doing it, you know, so, somewhat a little bit differently kind of, or, or like taking that idea and, and making a different project type thing out of it. I always love seeing that people kind of taking the ball and rolling with it. So anyway, uh, let's see here. Oh yeah. So Drew was asking, what does it tell you a clock can't? So hopefully that helps out. It's, it's just, it's going to be more consistent in general. Um, when to pour, it's going to be pretty consistent. The only issue is what's the starting viscosity or what's the viscosity of the resin, I guess. Now, temperature, so you can't utilize, so I, the, that 95 to 130 at the most, I, I don't even think I'd go that high, 95 to like 115, that's a good range somewhere in there, depending for Alumilite clear and clear slow. That does not work for epoxy and every other brand on the market. Um, every brand and, and like every, every resin kind of has like, many resins have different working times so that's going to kind of factor in a little bit and, and they all kind of work a little bit differently. So um, what I would recommend is, is do some experiments, um, you know, especially if you're using a resin that, that, that nobody uses and nobody has any guidelines on this stuff, like what temperature they kind of use or, or pour at. Um, try one thing you can do. And a lot of you guys are going to probably gasp and be like, oh, why would you do this? try mixing up the resin and just seeing how long it actually takes uh, for it to like, you know, turn into a solid, like, like it would not be pourable kind of thing and keep taking the temperature. So you just kind of have an understanding. Now you're going to pretty much waste the resin possibly, but um, you know, it's a good experiment, you know, maybe mix up a hundred or 200 grams and just kind of play around with it, watch it, see what happens, take that temperature over time and you should get an idea that way. That's one way. Or you could try like just waiting till like, you know, 120, see what happens. And if it was too late, <laughs> then, you know, do it a little sooner. So there's different ways, but there's a lot of resins that people have some guidelines for. Um, I don't, I want to say, and don't, don't quote me on this, but I want to say that, that many of the epoxies, a lot of people, I think, wait till like 130 uh, on, on a lot of those things, like Amazing Clearcast and Liquid Diamonds, at least. Total boat might be different. I don't know. And I know they have different, you know, like formulations. Um, stone coats probably different. So, uh, but anyway, hopefully that kind of helps out a little bit with that. All right. So I think let's see. Did I miss? Let <laughs> me like clear and rise. Oh man, that's funny. Yeah, if you're not really into replicating things, then then it's I, frankly it's it's a lot less stressful. Uh, to, I I enjoy just throwing things out there, like just being like whatever, you know, and and having fun with it. But if you want to redo it, then uh, you know, sometimes it's there. It is the, the loom light clear and rice. That's funny. Do you have a Do you have a picture? Are you on Instagram or Facebook? I'd love to see that. Uh, Paul's asking, what's the best method to create silicone molds? Um, I would use silicone. Um, I, I don't know. 
I, I know that there's people that say that you can do like free or cheap, you know, whatever. I wouldn't mess with it personally. The thing is, this stuff is pretty expensive and if it reacts with your resin and causes failures in that, I mean, so you saved money on the, the silicone, probably isn't gonna last that long uh, anyway. And then, you know, you might've ruined your project. So, you know, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna make some silicone molds, I would recommend getting, you know, silicone um, from, from a, wherever, a reputable supplier, I would just say. Um, I think a really good, like, general purpose silicone is this Plat 25 from Illumilite. Um, I really like this. The reason I like this, and I've tried quite a few different silicones. One of the things that I absolutely hate about silicone, most of them are so thick that it is just a chore to mix it up. And the Plat 25, the Plat 40, and the Plat, whatever the other one, 10, I think is the lower one. All three of those are super thin viscosity, and it's also, let me just double check. I haven't, I haven't made a silicone mold for a while. It's, yeah, well, actually, I can just look at the buckets. It's also a one-to-one -one mix ratio, which is way better than the 15-to-1 or whatever. These things are kind of weird with some silicones. So um, Plat 25, very good general purpose, no matter what kind of thing you're making. It generally will, will work outside of maybe a, a, a few types of specific types of projects. Um, but give it a give it a shot. I think I, I, that's what I would recommend personally. Um, you know, another one that people ask and say, "Oh, can I just get away with spraying my molds with Pam cooking spray as a mold release?" And I'm just like, "No, I I wouldn't." To save you know what two dollars or something like that, just go get you know a, a mold release that's made for resin casting. It just to me that's my always going to be my my recommendation. So anyway. <laughs> beans and rice nice yeah log books are very important i think um that's why I, I and you know what's funny is i i never um like for two years i didn't even have one and then i'm like you know what i should do <laughs> you know like oh maybe i should write this down yeah i think ben's works did uh something with rice i think he made a pen Wheat. So silicone and corn. Oh yeah, like the caulking. I think that's what it is. Caulking and corn. I, I mean, you can go for. I wouldn't. You can go for it. I wouldn't do that personally. Yeah, plat fifty five. Um, well, it wasn't even as. I mean, there are some that are ridiculous. Yeah, plat fifty five. I wouldn't recommend. I actually used that for one of my molds. The sphere. The the sphere burl thing. That stuff is way, it's not even so much the mixing. That stuff is so rigid that you can't demold your blanks. Like it, it's a very specific, um, it, it, that's one that it has a specific use. Um, a super rigid silicone like that, it's really made for um, making something that's like really thin and floppy. Um, that's like bendable is, is going to be the final product that you're making. So it'd be like a two piece mold and that thing needs to be rock solid. So it's not moving around and getting your part, you know, perfect. That's what that's good for. That's not good for demolding, you know, random things. Um, you want to go for something a little bit low, lower um, hardness. And so that's why the, the 25 is great because it's, it's rigid enough for most things. Um, but it's also very, very easy to demold, you know, odd, odd shaped things. 40 is going to be a little bit more rigid and then the 10 is like super floppy. So let's see here. Yeah, that thing totally reminded me of Sherbert too. Nice. Glow in the dark resin stars. Nice. Those are, that'll be cool. Yeah. So for something like that, if you're doing thin, that might not be, you know, you may, may be able to get away with that, that caulking thing. Um, Another one that's not a bad way to go is the mold putty stuff. Um, that's pretty quick to work with. Uh, actually, another one that, that Illumilite has. Do I have any? They have one that's reusable. Um, so for like small things and, and you know, simple projects, I, hopefully they still have it. I don't know. But they have one called Amazing Remelt. And literally, you can 
like melt it down in the, the microwave. So like you can, you can, how does this work? Yeah. All right, so yeah, when you're making the mold, you're gonna heat this up either in a microwave or on like a double boiler oven type thing, um, you know, like burner. It'll get it liquid, then you pour it and it hardens, right? But then you can just reuse it. You just melt it down again if you're, you only wanna use the mold once and you can remelt it and then reuse it. So I haven't done a lot with that because I don't really do things too often that, that are like a one once off one off kind of deal i usually like you know making molds like this um but that's another option um, i don't think that stuff's very expensive really just throwing it out there one that i know of all right guys so i think i'm probably gonna get going it's 440 now i don't want to take up all your day Let's see here. Your fiance is yelling not to use the caulking stuff. I don't know. I just, uh, I mean, like, I get the, the budget idea thing. And, and silicone's not cheap. I, I totally get it. But uh, I don't know. It just seems smarter to just get silicone for this stuff a lot of times. That's just, I don't know. That's how I usually operate. I, I don't. I like to try to remove as many things that can make a project fail, <laughs> like off the bat, like try to remove all the barriers that are going to make me, because I already have enough built in, I'm going to screw something up, you know, just give, give me the right stuff and I can screw things up pretty easily. So when you're, when you use things that are kind of setting you up for possible failure, like uh, I, I, I usually just kind of steer clear of that kind of thing personally and that's that's why i kind of recommend it I, that's all i can do is recommend what i would do so yeah it's like gelatin it's like jello or something so anyway they still have it nice and don't forget guys use uh zach 10 if you're it, i would recommend if you're going to use this it's a one-time thing like the first time you use that code um, but zach 10 when you're checking out on Illumilite's website will save you 10 percent. so i would save up buy resin silicone and all kinds of stuff throw in that code and then save yourself 10% on that order. So, but if, if all you're going to do is just, just, you know, buy, that's all you need from them, then, then use the 10% and save. So anyway, guys, I really appreciate all of you guys joining me for the fun today. I can't wait to get these things pulled out. So again, I'm getting the COVID, the second COVID shot tomorrow, and I don't know how I'm going to react to it. <laughs> so the first one wasn't that bad, but, uh, so I, I may or may not be, in the shop let's say if i'm really sick or something like that i may not be in the shop this weekend uh, but i will get pictures up of once i get these things demolded as soon as i possibly can i'm hoping i'm probably this weekend um, as long as i'm not like on my deathbed after that COVID shot um, and then again for for patrons uh, we're, we're moving back the first friday to next friday um, just because i don't want to have to end up canceling that um, if i do feel sick after that shot so Anyway, guys, I, I really appreciate all of the awesome support from you guys from the Super Chats and great color choices on these. I, I can't wait to see how those things turn out. And again, thank you all for joining the fun tonight. I hope you have a great evening. Uh, get in the shop and do some resin casting. And if you guys try out some of these fluorescent colors and mix around and do all that kind of stuff, don't forget to tag me on Instagram or Facebook uh, so I can see what you make. Uh, I always love seeing what you guys come up with. So anyway, guys, again, have a great night, and I will see you guys all next Wednesday, 3 p.m. Pacific time for some more live stream casting. Have a good one, guys.